Hello and welcome to the Inquisitorial Archive. My name is Kevin Rourke and today I'm going to be reviewing Demon Hunter for Dark Heresy. Now this, this one's really a mixed bag. Um, I did Blood of Martyrs, but I see the bits I like and dislike, and, but there's some blatant bits. Unfortunately, I can't, I'm not going to blame Fancy Flight for a lot of this. Because a lot of this, I think, is I, it's more they have, to, they have to go the line that Games Workshop goes, but still, it's like uh, you get some cool background stuff for Ordem Lea stuff like the Scalariot at Arms, basically detailing this um, inquisitorial organization, which is a very odd one. Some of them don't make entire sense for it, uh, like that they allow Fane Knights to actually always like, well, the Inquisition don't know that the Fane Knights are back, that's part of the thing. They're just excommunicated section of the Inquisition kind of thing and that they were supposed to have been purged. So they tend that they're like, they're like, yeah, that, that's odd. Like it is supposed to be like, oh, well they tolerate them because of these ancient structures that we laid down for so long. I was like, fine, you know, like, go nuts. But it's got a nice section talk about how the Demon Hunters and the Sector work. Plus it's got a very nice section, section detailing out some pretty odd members of the Ordem Lay. It's not necessarily Inquisitors all themselves, like you have uh, Maya, the Blasted Angel, a very odd woman who was blasted by uh, Zinchin Warp Flames. Uh, Kermaya Tor, the Hollow Priest, who is an excellent um, banisher, an exorcist. Uh, but all these guys, like, this isn't how to use these kind of games. I always appreciate stuff like that. Uh, and then um, you get your first few details in the Grey Knights. We'll talk about the Grey Knights at the end. Um, I have issues with the current line with the Grey Knights. You might be picking that up by my uh, tone and body language. You get some cool background stuff for, um, you know, background choices. So you can end up with some odd stuff like Fate Eater is a particularly cool one where, yeah, you start with one less Fate Point and you don't get a divination like all the other Dark Heresy characters. But every time you kill somebody with a Fate Point, like important enemy or NPC, you get to roll up a divination, you apply its effects immediately, you can't double up on them. But if you're doing a certain type of game, that could be really powerful. Um, but you're giving a bluff for it's 400 XP. You can only take one background. You get stuff, so it's like, okay, cool. And you got Demon Vanquisher. You got you actually fought like a lesser demon or something. You beat them off, and that's why the Order of has picked you up. Um, some cool stuff which links in. They've got mentions of Inquisitor Herod here. Um, he likes to pop up in different places and some of the Dark Heresy and other 40 lines. You get some cool alternate ranks like the... Agent of Relic Query 26. It's basically this repository of all these relics and stuff that they've picked up. And if you become a member of this thing, which is quite difficult to do, you find something new, unique, or higher. Um, at start of a mission, you get to roll on the table and you get some piece of gear is issued out to you. You don't get to quest a piece of gear, you get a piece of gear issued out to you. Because that's for a banisher, which is pretty cool. Cult Stalker, it's a pretty nice one. I, I, I like it. It seems a bit, I don't know, it could be. See it being abused, but overall I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty cool with it. The Demon Nim Seeker is a bit good when it comes to like, oh yeah, true names of demons are supposed to be Dixie hard to get, but these guys can just go off and took, I think it's like a year or something to get to spend. What they find out the name? Um, da -da -da -da. So yeah, you, it's it's just, it's a bit good to find your true names of it as like, okay, you're trying to go for a cool aspect with it. I get that, but you're cheapening other stuff they spent. So I don't like when they do that. It's like, you can make something seem cool without trying to take somebody else down and make them look crappy. <sighs> the Order of Sicarius is actually pretty cool. The Order of Sicarius Initiate, because they're not going to make an Order of Sicarius book. They're the members of the Inquisition. The Order of Scarus is the section of the Inquisition that monitors the Assassin Temples. And you effectively end up with like guys who are training of a Temple Assassin and are Inquisitors and like some of their Inquisitors, it's like crazy. But because of different reasons, they say that sometimes Ordo Malaeus guys get some of their acolytes sent off for additional training and you end up with some unusual options. They have to be rank four and it gives every class, gives you different things. Like the, I think the Tech Priest, what does the Tech Priest get? Uh, they can use their intelligence and tele instead of fellowship for inquiry. Like they get all this unusual training. One of the cool things, it did pay XP for that, of course. One of the cool things is you get a side reading of one, but it was like, uh, don't explain that anywhere. It was like, uh, like it's easy, Jim, just going, no, you're not allowed. But at the same time, they kind of, you could do some cool stuff with that. Like it's a way of going, well, mechanically it's meant to be balanced because they got in here, doesn't mean it is. But it looks okay. The pyro class are really good with flamers. Uh, so much so that they went and said, yeah, they can use a strategy's weaponry. He's like, okay, I can get over that. 
uh, but they can bless, they're just trained ridiculously well with flamers and stuff, and they can bless the Prometheum itself, give a little bit of time. Texorcist is cool for redeeming Maltech and uh, Heretech technology. If we go to Tiamancer, somebody in my game played one of these four, and this is not Tiamancy as it is in Rogue, in Rogue Trader. Unfortunately, they should keep these things clear between the lines that Tiamancer and Tiamancy have nothing to do with each other. They're completely different, one's in Rotary and one's in Dark Heresy, and they work completely differently. The Tiamancer is this great and powerful diviner, and you end up with a cool mechanic where you can do this psychic power, which is unique to this, where once per session you can do this special kind of divination. And it lets you effectively function as if you had a single common scholastic forbidden lore trained, or if you already have that skill. Now obviously you have to do this for your tech. If you go, well, I'm gonna I have this skill, you go, I it's really important we get this. I'm actually going to use my once a session thing, so I'll get a reroll. So it's like, yeah, I like that, it's cool. You have your um, cell directives, much like in, uh, in uh, Blood of Barters, but you're not ending up with any pure fate, so I far prefer them. Um, they're pretty cool. You get to order them right now, as well as um, guys who are specifically sent in to uh, help the Inquisitor track down rogue Inquisitors. I like that, it helps make give a group a more cohesive focus and the kind of type of thing if the GM does it it makes it very clear to people what they want to what they want to do. They have absolutely insane weapon weapons in the armory. Um which is odd but you know you can get it we can get it there's the uh, the hell rifle which is just unique really weird possibly maltech piece of equipment. But you end up with the recoil things that you could, I wouldn't recommend making them terribly available on the stats for a thunder hammer. Dear God. Uh, which once more uh, they they have stats for Thunder Hammer and some Rogue Trader books. It should not be very rare. The only times you see Thunder Hammers really showing for k are Terminators, Terminator Soul Squad specifically, sometimes Inquisitors, and sometimes you get Space Wing Captains things running around with Thunder Hammers. They should not be as rare as a Power Sword, especially Mortals, which I've only ever seen Inquisitors using. They should be at least extremely rare. I don't get it. I disagree with it. That's my own position on it. They have Malaeus power armor and turn if that's from Mortal Terminator armor, which are pretty cool. Uh, the Malaeus Terminator armor, of course, is unique, so it's really hard to get. But uh, it's quite cool if you have the if you want the option there for players to be able to salvage it or to try and go get it. If they're essential level, they could try and get it built. It is unique, so it's going to be very difficult to get. Um, some additional force fields and stuff is pretty cool. I like some of the additional ammunition stuff. They've got this particular type of um, LAS pistol clip, which has been gone into this particular area where they have this sacred flame kind of thing, and it effectively does sanctify damage. It can never be recharged, which means you don't have to go, oh, it's a demon. Well, I've got my bolt pistol with holy ammo, and I've got my, you know, auto pistol with holy ammo, and you've got the guy who's got like, who is like, oh, I really love my LAS pistol, love my LAS gun. Oh. Take out my auto pistol with the holy ammo. Like, no, you can actually stick with it if you really like this one style combat. If you really like the idea of character with a las pistol or las gun, they're not the most powerful weapons, but they have their perks. Like the reliability stuff should not be underestimated. And they've got things that the next session is really nice where they go off and they detail about demons and randomly rolling up demons. There's some really cool inventive things on chart, like demons that can only be seen in reflections, things like that. Um, I remember using these, some of these in a, like these are obviously scaled to different levels of demon stuff and if you want to roll up you can roll up a demonic herald or a greater demon or just a lesser demon, a unique lesser demon kind of type thing. And you can end up with weaknesses with these guys and stuff, but I remember giving one of them um, their laughter caused insanity so every turn that this guy laughed, the players we're potentially gaining insanity points with done a check, which is like really horrifying. And really like your character's going mad very quickly. Um, and I like that and they give stats for nerglings and different other things, like a couple of extra demon stats that are nice. Some of them might not be as powerful as I'd like, but they give a few extra rules for specific demon weapons. I've already mentioned demon weapons in some of the other books, but it's nice to have them here. And then it's Grey Knights. I don't like the current approach to Grey Knights. I find it silly that they apparently go off and kill everyone. Like, oh, if they group up your team of acolytes, it's pretty much saying that they should kill your acolytes after it's like, but they're members of the Inquisition. You don't have to tell them everything about the Grey Knights. You just have to be a space queen who shows up. 
you don't have to tell them it's like even if they say grey knights that doesn't mean they understand what you are and if they're acolytes not necessarily going to tell anyone if they do tell anyone it's probably under a member position it's not that big of a deal and then they have that they basically mind what a get out of space marine mind wipe the mind cleanse and stuff for seeing them it's like that's not my biggest issue with them it's the stuff where they're going off and going they're immune to chaos however they like to do blatantly sorcerous rituals with the blood of sisters of battle to make themselves more immune and that guy over there rick he's the immunicist of all it's called resistance and it's called a dictionary guys you need to often read what your words mean um, I said a lot more pleasantly than that, but I was kind of making fun of when games working. A man told me, oh, I should go off and uh, learn, uh, you know, you should maybe you should just learn how to play the game better. Because, like, the guy who's working games workshop, and I was kind of looking like, I just remember my friend was there, I was like, I didn't talk about that. I didn't say their army was cheesy. I don't play 40k. I haven't played against Green Knights in years, not against their new incarnation. I'm not going to say whether they're cheesy or not. But I don't like the way they're going with the background with them. It's racially they did. Oh, I I know people who from like playing that watch. I see the stats. These guys go like, what? They don't have squad notes, but they're all psychers, and they all have crazy gear. Um, the lack of squad modes makes them a lot less powerful in my respects. But they've got all sorts of crazy ones because you know, like their power, so their four swords. These nemesis four swords. They increase the force field. Say as many force field they have. Okay, sure. Why not? Go go nuts. But some of the other crap they have, where they go off and one of the guys can, he gets to use his Sire if, if he, he doesn't have to use a power, it's basically like, yeah, there's an enemy at the other side of that wall there, I get to use my perception as additional penetration. Because I'm just really good at it's like, other space means are trained for stuff too, guys. They have psychic powers, each and every guy. They have rules for bringing them in, and they have different types of grain, like they've got the, uh, the strike squad, the purgation squad, kind of guy, and a purifier guy. They all do different things, but I just don't like the way Games Workshop was gone with them. I don't like the way the rules are done here for them particularly much. It's more just kind of like, okay, this doesn't make terrible out of us. It is written thankfully in mind with whether you want to use them in a Dark Heresy game or a Death Watch game. It gives you advice on these kind of type things. Um, they don't have requisition like they do in Death Watch. They just gets whatever they want. That's pretty much what the rule says. If they want this at the start of a mission, they'll get whatever they want. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen them in action. I know a friend was playing a game. They're going nuts. They're having loads of fun. In that respect, fine. It's actually, if you want a game where you're just going to go absolutely nuts with stuff, perfect. Death Watch is pretty good at it too. Well, if you just want to be like really tearing the crap out of stuff. They're cool on that front too. Although I think Death Watch are going to get an edge out on them due to the fact of squad modes because he's going to have squad modes. But easy enough to give these guys squad modes. But to do with the rules for if you want to have them in Death Watch as well. Which you could. You could have somebody say, I really, 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 really want to play a Grey Knight. Fine. You could let them. Whether you're going to allow them do squad modes or not and say, well, you've got psychic powers without having to be a librarian. And you get some other stuff like, so I'm going to leave it at that. I just don't like the way they detail out Grey Knights. Um, it's not necessarily Fantasy Flight's fault. They have a different, uh, thankfully they have a different tar character sheet. They have a different character sheet at the back for Grey Knights for Dark Heresy because you obviously you're not going to have necessary access to Death Watch, which Death Watch character sheet could probably work out pretty well for them anyway. But they're not assuming people have access to Death Watch or necessary access to the internet. But they have a demon stats record sheet for your randomly rolled up demon. So if you want to just roll up a demon stuff. But cool in that respect. <sighs> Mixed bag. Love some of the stuff in it. Hate some of the other stuff in it. Mainly focused around Grey Knights. To be clear, Grey Knights are cool. I like Grey Knights. I think they're the initial concept is cool. I think they're just trying to go, oh yeah, you become a pal and you have to beat like 12 greater demons with no equipment is like one would be enough. Or even just, I beat 12 greater demons. It's like, that. that's cool. That's cool. You don't have to, like, you're, like you're, they've got all sorts of crazy crap going on. It's like, they don't understand. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I'll see you again. Goodbye.